officially uh, day two. Um, didn't do anything today. I'll probably stay in, but Keisha actually went to rehearsal. I did order from a takeaway not too far from here called uh, Pure. So for lunch, I have cold press orange juice, mangoes, and pineapple, and a chicken picante wrap. Um, so I'm just chilling in the room. I probably won't do anything tonight. Maybe go by the uh, London Bridge and take pictures of the Tower Bridge. Um, they say it looks different at night and lit up. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm probably going to sit here, uh, eat my lunch, and watch uh, Ozark. Uh, I think I'm on season three. So have an opportunity to watch that and catch up. So um, I'll check in later. Mm -hmm. It's seven o'clock. Oh, it was six o'clock when I did it. Six thirty when I did it. I'm trying to get the, the alarm on video. Nah, it's what's going on next door messing with us. Yeah. That's not right. Who told you that? She called somebody on the phone and said, I need staff upstairs now. I can't get the damn thing. She's pushing, pushing. I can't get the thing off. She said, it's next door. And uh, I said, it's next door. All right, guys, we finally, um, we actually been in Scotland for quite a few hours. We got here around two o'clock. It's actually after midnight now, um, but we took a little nap um, because we have to leave tomorrow to go somewhere else for two more days. Then we come back here. But let's let's talk about the last 72 hours and then the last 24 hours. Um, so... The last 72 hours, um, where did it all start? We were, someone in our group had, um, symptoms, sore throat or hoarseness, congestion, mm -hmm. fever, um, and we were all, of course, skeptical, it sounds like COVID or whatever, so. They didn't come to certain events and then showed up for a performance saying they were better. Um, so, of course, at a choir performance, you're singing, you're talking, the person wore no mask. <clears throat> so, um, it seems as though Keisha started feeling mild symptoms. It was congestion, runny nose. Um, so, you know, we weren't too worried, but we, re I realized that day she hung out with this person and we hung out, uh, they came and got me from the hotel and then we, all four of us went out. So, um, and again, this person's not wearing a mask or anything. But they seem fine. Though. Right. And, and, and they seem fine. I guess visually they look fine. They seem fine. They said they felt fine. So. 
Keisha's symptoms got worse. They went to a performance, uh, the big performance you saw at the cathedral. Um, Keisha's nose was running the whole performance. Um, and then there was an option to go to dinner that night. And, uh, we initially weren't going to go or Keisha wasn't feeling. Well, I thought we were going to go. Keisha wasn't feeling well. She was like, I'd rather go back to the hotel and rest. I was fine with that up to the point where I really wanted to eat some free dinner. <laughs> so we hung around the church, you know, debating back and forth whether or not we were going to go. Uh, a group came out, two ladies, and they were like, hey, we're going to hail a, cac a taxi. Why don't, you know, we all go together? Okay, cool. No problem. Well, the individual who was not feeling so well and was feeling better, she came out and got in the taxi, in the taxi with us. And I immediately was like, okay, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this, but really, how do you tell someone no, or how do you do it to where you don't look weird saying, I don't want to get in a taxi with you or never mind, I'm not going to go. So it's five of us sitting in a taxi riding, <clears throat> sitting back riding and um, we get to the venue, we eat. Um, Keisha's still not feeling well, but you know, she's up, she's perky. We get back to the hotel. She immediately goes back to sleep, wake up the next day. And the group is supposed to go to a yeah, tour. Yeah. Uh, they so they take they're supposed to take the bus, go to Canterbury, and then come back. Well, we decided not to go that whole day because Keisha was still feeling bad. I felt fine, so immediately Keisha took a COVID test that morning. Yeah, she took one that morning, and it was positive. So then. We're like, oh no, because there's a travel ban coming from the UK back into the States. You have to have a negative test within 24 hours. Now, we have some time uh, to change that around because we were only in six days in our 13 day trip. Well, that changed it around, but. Get a yeah, test. so we had time to get a negative test. So we weren't too worried. But then the next thing, you know, we thought about is, am I negative or am I positive? So I took a test a couple of hours after she did, and my results were negative. So though we were in the same room in that room, matter of fact, as you saw, quite small. Um, I didn't catch... Uh, anything. I didn't have a positive result. Um, sneeze. That day also, we went to go visit the... Buckingham Palace. Yeah. We went to go visit Buckingham Palace. And all day, like, we were sneezing and and we thought, you know, figured stuff falling from the trees. We were just, you know, kind of, even, even now, I'm kind of... Everybody, like, everybody, You know, everywhere. Uh, everybody out there uh, on the barricades were sneezing, people coughing, sneezing, coughing, sneezing, coughing. So we thought, you know, it was just allergies or whatever. We bought Benadryl, figuring, okay, that'll just solve it. So anyways, I had my negative test. We let the director know. And we have a decision to make because the group is going to Scotland the very next morning. They leave at 6 in the morning. Again, we have someone with a positive test. We have me with a negative test. The group is going to take an eight-hour bus to get to another place, and and we have to decide how we're going to get there or whatever. So, you know, we're letting the, the day go. Keisha's symptoms don't really change. She still has fever, uh, aches and pains, going on and on and on. We're, we're just trying to find out what's going on. Come to find out the couple that we initially um, or the person that we feel initially had it um, that we probably caught it from had more symptoms and now their spouse that was in the same room with them is having severe symptoms. So we're like 
you know, when we find out they take COVID tests and both of them are positive. And we're we're thinking in our mind, okay, so what do we do now? Our director comes to our room to give us additional uh, COVID tests just so we can keep testing and, you know, look for a negative result. We're thinking, okay, the group has to leave us. Um, and they kind of had this conversation before the trip started. You know, if something like this happens, you're paying your extra way to whether it's extend your stay, um, um, travel, things like that. You have to figure it all out. So based on what the director is instructing us, we're thinking, okay, we can't get on that bus with everyone else in the choir, possibly affecting the whole bus. Um, again, even though I'm negative, she's positive. We're really, really worried about that. And we're also thinking the other couple is staying behind also. Now, there's a group of people who are staying behind to go to another uh, country or yes. city or country? country? Country. They were going to France. So, you know, some people stay behind for that. But we find out that... Uh, they didn't stay back. They actually got on the bus and went with the group to the next place. Okay. Now, we aren't the most wealthiest. Uh, well, let's say this. We're not the smartest with our money. So you're asking us to come out of pocket to pay for another night in a hotel. Okay. And this is not just an ordinary hotel, and it's not a hotel in the United States. So we're expecting to pay more. So we come to find out that the hotel is an additional $260 a night. I think $263 or something like that. Um, so we get together. You know, we have money, but we're assuming that money's for, um, you know, food. You know, we need to buy the rest of the, the trip, taxis, taxis yeah. things like that. We're not thinking to spend a bulk of money on a hotel stay. So we're thinking, okay, we got to pay for three nights so that Keisha has enough time to have a negative test. Once she has a negative test, we can probably go straight back to Houston from where we are. Forget about the rest of the trip, blah, blah, blah. So, um... We're talking with the travel agent. We're talking with the director. We're not getting clear communication between the three of us. So um, <laughs> Keisha and I actually get out that day out of the hotel. We walk around. We get some sunlight. Keisha starts to feel better immediately. And that day, her symptoms are going down. She's feeling much better. We're excited. We get back to the hotel, and our keys don't work. And we're... You know, we, we basically just left so that the maid service could clean the room. So we have stuff in the room, but can't get up there to get it. So we talked to the the hotel uh, registration, let them know uh, we're supposed to extend our stay. Someone's supposed to call them. Nobody called anybody. Communication didn't happen. Yeah, so it was a lot of confusion. And point blank period, we had to... We're, we were told to, oh, you know, you're extending your stay, come out with X amount of dollars. We were saying three nights, so it was, what, nine, six hundred something? Nine hundred something dollars for three additional days. And, you know, we were trying to find any loophole to get around that. That's what we were instructed that we right. stay three days. Right, so th this is this is what we were instructed to do based on a negative test. Positive test. I'm sorry, a positive test. So, um, nine hundred something dollars. Point back clear. We didn't have it, but we were we found that if you use a Visa card, they don't charge it all right away. But if you use a Mastercard or anything else, they charge a full amount right away. So I have a Visa on me. We go to use that. Does not work. Um. So we take a moment, sit to the side, figure something out. Keisha, thankfully, has money in crypto. 
And but the problem is she can't get the money from A to B where we need it to be. Um, thankfully enough, also I own a business or co-own a business, which makes a positive cash flow. Um, and I was able to draw some funds from there, and we decided let's do one night. Um, we were like, look, we'll cross the bridge of, you know, what if one night isn't enough? We'll figure that out later. And a good thing we made that choice. So we pay for one night. We get back to our rooms. And we come to find out shortly after that, that they raised the band where you don't need to have a negative COVID result to get back into the States. And they raised the band on this coming Sunday we don't leave until Thursday of next week, which means Keisha doesn't have to have a, a negative test prior to leaving the UK. So it doesn't matter what her result is. She can still leave. We can still leave. All right. So once we got past that, we're like, great. Now, how do we get to the group? Because they have additional stops. And we don't want to have to pay to get to 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 move around and, and catch up with them. And if so we waited too late. We wouldn't be able to get to them because right. You have to have a charter bus. Based on where the group was going, it was remote to the point where you had to basically ride with them, or you're not going to meet with them. That was basically what we were told. So first thing we had to do is figure out how we're going to get to Scotland in time to reach them so that we can continue the, the rest of the itinerary with them. Right, right. So, we say, hey, let's book a train from London to Scotland or Eden, Edinburgh. And uh, Edinburgh? Edinburgh? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. I don't think it's B-E-R-G. I think it's B-O-U. All right. So, um, though it took them a bus ride of eight hours, we found a train that could get us there in four and a half. So we booked that. It wasn't expensive, actually. And it was a nice little ride. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a train station. And we're not supposed to be. But <laughs> it's a long story. I guess we'll tell you later. But let us at least get on the train because what we've gone through in the last 48 hours. How about the last 30 minutes? Oh. <laughs> the last 30 minutes have been... Eventful. Yes. And, and, and very... Uh, interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, England is... London is very interesting. <laughs> That's for sure. Right, right. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, so we had to stop and uh, interrupt because uh, somebody was from the United States and she talked to us and heard us talking about uh, our experience in London and just chimed in, but. Man, when you hear about what's been going on and how we press through and how doors have been open and uh, we're still waiting on more doors to be open. I think once we're rejoined with the group, I think we'll feel much, much better because we'll be back on track with our itinerary. So I'll either explain, explain on the train or explain when we get to the hotel.
train was actually real, real easy to, to navigate. Um, I have some pictures here. They had a platform um, for the Harry Potter series. I took a picture there. Big Harry Potter fan. Um, but we decided to take a train. This train top speed was 130 miles per hour. So we got there in about four and a half hours. Um, and we get to the hotel that the group is at. And as we're walking in, we, we take a taxi from the... We'll talk about the taxi. Oh. <laughs> so let me back up. So we leave the hotel in London. And we go to the lobby to check out. And we let them know we need a taxi to the train station. So the concierge, wonderful, wonderful okay. young lady. Okay. Um, she was having trouble booking a taxi. She figured, hey, let me go ahead and go outside and hail you guys a taxi. But she nobody was coming. And she kept trying. And she was a good eight to ten minutes trying to figure this out. She finally gets somebody on the phone. They said they're going to send a taxi person. They're on the way. Great. Cool. However, her shift is changing. So she has to leave. New guy comes in. And we're waiting. So taxi pulls up. You know, it's a regular vehicle. It's not a taxi vehicle that we normally been we normally ride in. And I knew something was sketchy, but at times I don't open my mouth. Um, and then it later confirmed that something was going on. So, so we get in this regular SUV, puts all our luggage in the back, and we look around and we notice there's no keypad or no meter. So there's no keypad to pay with your card. There's no meter that sits in the front where we can see the number go up. And we've ridden in at least four taxis. Uh, since being here, and we were like, uh, it dawned on me, but again, I didn't say anything. So, we start driving, and as we pull to the light, this guy says, so it's cash, right? And we and Keisha look at each other, and then Keisha starts talking, and the guy doesn't even acknowledge that she said a word. He says, it's cash, right? And he turns around and looks at me. She says something else, and he still ignores her. And then it's not until I say no. Like, Keisha's saying a sentence. I have to almost interrupt her and answer his question for him not to stare at us like he's staring at us. He turns back around when I say it. And she looks at me like, did he just ignore everything that I just... And I looked at her like, yeah, he acted like you said nothing. So we're riding, and he's nervous because he just told us this is a cash, a cash taxi. We have credit cards. Right. We're expecting to pay with credit cards now. Like we've been doing the whole trip. The whole trip we've been paying with credit cards. Now, we had British pounds on us. We had cash on us. Thing is, we didn't want to use it for this taxi, so... We told him, no, we don't have cash. Anyways, again, he didn't explain that this is a cash taxi. And there's no meter. We don't know where you get this fee from. She's also asking, how much it's is this trip? Estimated. He didn't answer her the first time. <laughs> she repeats it again. He finally gives her an estimate. And it was like 28 bucks, $28. And we have that in British Pounds. But again, Wait. we're trying to use a car. Anyways. So we're driving. We drive over the, uh, not the London Bridge. The, uh, it is yeah, that that one. That's we drive over the London Bridge, and we're still explaining to him like, sir, we have no cash. So he turn. He makes a turn, and he says, "I'm going to stop at this ATM." You no, got. He pulls up to the ATM. He says, "There's an ATM over there." Right. So basically, he wants us to get out, get the cash, come back in. So Keisha looks at me. Hands me her card, and I I'm trying to discreetly tell her, or ask her for her pin number for her card, 
What she gives me is not a bank card. So I'm looking at it. It's a credit card. I'm looking at it. I did it on purpose. Okay. And I'm look I, but it, it wasn't clear to me. So I get out, go to this ATM that I'm not familiar with. Mind you, it's eight thirty in the morning, so everybody's actually it's not busy, but I'm still looking around like it's a packed street. So I stick the card in the machine. Of course it asks for a pin. I look for a button that lets me bypass it without the pin. Doesn't have one. So I hit cancel, it shoots the car back out. I get back in the car. I tell her, this isn't a bank card. I can't get money out. And he, his eyes, this guy was uh, probably of Arab descent, Indian descent. And he turns, and his eyes are like big as silver dollars as he turns around and looks at me. And he's like shaking almost every time he talks to us. And he goes, what's going on? I said, and we're basically like, we have, we can't pull cash out. And he's getting frustrated. You can visibly see he's getting frustrated. And he's like, pretty much asking us, what do you want to do? And I said, you never told us that this is not, uh, this, you never told us that this is a cash taxi. Had we known, we would not, not have gotten in. I said, take us back to the hotel. So he's driving actually pretty fast. And I said, how have you been here all this time? He could, not, cash? he could not understand how we never used cash. And we kept saying, not for a taxi. We, we, we've been using cards. We've been getting around. You guys accept cards everywhere. So why wouldn't we think we can use a card? And then he, then he started saying, okay, give me $20. He like, like a U.S. Money. Right. He didn't care how he was going to get it. He was like, look, give me something. Give me what you got. And, and that'll be cool. So we pull up back to the hotel. And he's basically in the front seat trying to explain to us how we owe him money. And we owe him, he said, we owe him $40. Now, 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Now, he told us the trip will cost 28 pounds or $28. To the station. The station is about 20 minutes away. So, if the station is 20 minutes away, and, we drove five minutes away. and all you did was drive us over a bridge less than a, about a half a mile, made a U-turn and came back, why is that 40, but the station is 28? Again, he has no meter, so he can make the prices up as we go. All that sounds sketchy. So, as... As we're pulling up to the hotel, Keisha uses an app to call for a taxi. So we get, we're now fussing with the guy outside of the front of the hotel. And so I say, I'm going to go back inside and get the concierge to explain to you why we're not giving you whatever you want us to give you because you you brought us nowhere and that we didn't know this was a cash taxi. So as I go get him, he's standing outside talking to a taxi that Keisha just ordered that wants to take us to the station. And it's a taxi that we're familiar with. It's the setup and the type of vehicle that we're familiar with. So he says, no problem. Go get your stuff. Put it in here. We'll go to the train station. As I'm telling the concierge to follow me back to the car, I'm pretty sure Keisha and the guy are having words back and forth. After, honestly, I didn't want to leave her there because I'm like, if this guy gets violent, she has no protection because I'm, you know, 30 feet ahead talking to another taxi and, and a concierge and she was still sitting in the car. I didn't want to pull off without luggage. Right. And one of us, that's the reason why one of us stayed because our luggage is still in the back. Of the trunk. Him if I to. So, and this guy, you know, he's he's not a big guy. Yeah, man, somebody we can handle. Bite his nose but uh, <laughs> but as I get back to the the taxi, the concierge is following me, and those those two are starting to go back and forth, explaining to each other how I'm not paying. We're nobody's paying. He started. He didn't do me. So they're arguing back and forth, trying to sort it out. Meanwhile, our taxi is getting frustrated further up, saying, you know, come on, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. 
At this point, I was ready to press the little button to lift up the trunk to grab our stuff so we can get out of there. Basically, all they did was the concierge told him, look, it's the weekend. My boss will be here on Monday. Let these people go to the train station. They're going to be late for their train. You and I will sort this out. I'll, you know, guy looks so low. come inside. Sort of, and this, I, I swear to you, this guy looks terrible. He looked terrified, like, like something. Was, this has that? never happened to me. Like that's yeah. what I wanted. This never happened. Like how could you guys not pay me? How in the world are you guys gonna? How are you? He was worried about. Well, how are you gonna sort it out on Monday? And I'm like, anyways, they're gonna sort that out. We packed our stuff. We went to the other guy. And the other, the other taxi guy was super nice and talked to us and calmed us down and told him, you know, it's going to be okay. You said that guy was not legit. That's so, not legit type of situation. They basically warned us about those type of taxis. And we're like, we're never doing that again. Nah. Matter of fact, the concierge that was there at first, the guy who, uh, he, who we was saying when we first got there. Yeah. He had mentioned to me before about doing ride shares. How was sketchy? Car shares, which is what I think we must have hopped in. Yeah. Because he was All like, right. oh, no, don't do that. Don't do he had told me not to do that. He like, That's what made me get the app. Because he's like, if you need a taxi, you can get on this uh, app and, and call for a taxi. So, so basically, don't do car shares. Don't do the car shares if you come into UK like, or London or whatever. But. We're here now. Oh, fast forward the story. We get here. We get out our taxi. We get to the lobby, and lo and behold, who do we see walking away from us, going to the elevators? The two individuals. And we saw both. I saw both. The two individuals. A, who we felt one that got us sick, got Keisha sick, and B. Um, the other one who had a fever the night before. Also, he should talk to these, oh, attempted to reach out to them. All day. All day while the, the group was traveling to Scotland. She attempted to reach out to this they person. They were in the room at the hotel with us. And they did not answer any messages. They waited till they were nice and settled in Scotland. That night. That night. To start messaging her back. Basically saying, we thought you guys were going to get on the bus with us. Just sit to the front. Because that's what the director told us. You guys were just going to sit to the front and, and wear your mask. We didn't know you guys weren't coming. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> thankfully, thankfully... Keisha bought travel insurance, which means we can get reimbursed on the extra hotel stay. We can get reimbursed on the train tickets. Um, any other fees that we incurred because of this little riff, we can be reimbursed on it. So we are officially here in Scotland. The group leaves. We haven't. I've seen one gentleman outside of. Um, those two individuals with the group, they were gone when we got here, but those two individuals stayed behind because they were feeling under the weather and it was raining and they want to, you know, one was hoarse. So, you know, we're going to see how things go tomorrow because we actually get on the bus tomorrow with the group. We go to a place called Oban and we'll be there for two days and then we come back to Scotland for a final day, and then we're back to Houston. So tomorrow morning is going to be interesting. Um, Keisha's symptoms actually are better. No fever. Uh, she actually wants to take a COVID test and still might take one tonight, right? Yeah. Um, just to see if it, it comes up negative. She's been wearing a mask the whole time. So, um, And again, I have, other than an itchy nose, which I think is from allergies, I don't have any symptoms. Um, so, you know, that was our eventful day. I know I told you a long roundabout story. But, um, 
you know, it, it's it's funny how we think robots are going to happen and somehow God finds a way to turn things around. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if our director had an idea that we weren't going to make it here. Like, oh, you guys are not going to make it with the group. And he don't know this one. She she finds a way to to get to, get what she wants, pretty much. If she wants to be somewhere, like, no, we're not doing it this way. Or if, if I suggest something and I don't know the how to after it, she'll go, okay, this this how it's gonna happen. And we're gonna get there and I don't care and we don't know that she has that type of attitude. I'm a little more passive. Um I'll go, well, what if and I try to think of every possible uh, way that it could go the other way, but it seems like every time she pushes forward, doors just open up and, and we end up getting what we need. So um, we also found out that this hotel is actually going to keep some of our luggage because we come right back to them. Um, so that's going to help us out with traveling. But I'm going to call it a night um, because we actually have to move some of our clothes around and be ready for tomorrow. We got to get up early and, you know, we'll see how tomorrow goes. I will definitely vlog and keep you guys updated. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.